Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card. I showed this on my blog a couple of weeks ago and after I'd made it, I was quite pleased with it, so I started playing a bit more and I made this one which is a ruby anniversary which is 40th and after that one I went on and I made a 25th wedding anniversary card which is silver and today I'm going to do a 50th anniversary which is gold. It's going to be like this except with the hearts here I'm going to do in gold foil so I feel that I've had a good change around here on different bits and pieces um, playing with different ways of doing it um, but it's a nice card, I'm happy with the design of it and this silver here, um, the ink, is new in the Christmas catalogue which I'm really thrilled about um, and it's this Delicata, um, that's the sh silvery shimmer we've also got the golden glitz which is the one I'm going to be using now and we've also got the celestial copper which is absolutely fantastic. Really, really pleased to see those in the catalogue. So I'm going to start off by telling you the card pieces that you're going to be needing. Um, because this is gold, I'm going to be using very vanilla. Right, I have to be careful with the gold. Um, I get migraines if I have anything that comes under the heading of flashing lights um, when the light catches into gold foil that's like a flashing light for me so I'm a little bit careful about it so the card pieces that you're going to need is you need a very vanilla card base um, which measures eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches scored and folded at four and one eighth inches which is 21 by 14.5 centimeters scored and folded at 10.5 centimeters and then you'll need two pieces of the gold foil which measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches which is 9.7 by 13.8 and then you need two pieces of very vanilla which measure three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches which is 9.4 by 13.5 you will also need two pieces of gold foil which measure approximately two and a half by two and three quarter inches and that's for the two gold hearts you'll need a scrap of gold which is for the scalloped oval the layer for the sentiment and also for those two little hearts and two hearts in there and you also need a scrap of very vanilla for the actual sentiment that one there okay I can't tell you how pleased I am with this um, silver ink and the gold looks fantastic as well because I've tried it. <laughs> right, okay, so what should we do now? I think because the gold, um, the inks, they do take a bit longer to dry, um, you can heat them with a heat tool, which is what I did on one of them, um, but what I've done for today is I've done my stamping ahead of time and I'm just allowing it to dry so it is going to be fine I'm going to be using that but I am still going to do one which I'll put to the side and use for another card on another day so I need those and I'm going to use a scrap of paper because with my hearts I want them to go off the edge um, so there's my hearts as I say I have used the gold before I was going to clean my stamps and I thought a bit of a waste of effort really um, so I need that and I need that uh, what was I going to show you the stamp set right so the hearts that comes from Forever Lovely 
whoops, is that a screen now? Yes, it is. Uh, Forever Lovely. So that's the one I'm using, which is really beautifully textured, which gives all the light and dark. With these two cards, I did actually stamp off once and then once and then a third time, which with colours I found worked brilliantly. Um, but it didn't seem to make much difference when I tried it on the silver. Or at least it came up so light with the silver, I wasn't happy with it. Um, so that's... I'm just trying to remember exactly what I've got to tell you. So I'll tell you when I use it. Okay, so let's have our ink. I always do a little test on the side here so I can see what's going to be happening. So the first one always start up here. Don't you think that's absolutely gorgeous? There you go. You can see the real shine, can't you? Right, so I tend to do mine coming down at an angle like this. I would like to say a very, very big thank you to everybody who responded to my um, question from my last video about have they ever had rings like this joined together. And I was surprised at exactly how many people have had this done and spoke about it as if it was like um, a normal thing that jewellers would do for you which is why I'm so surprised um, my jeweller didn't offer it as a, an option but we are going uh, tomorrow which will be Saturday you'll be watching this on Sunday um, so I'll have done it by the time you're listening to this um, we're going up to Hatton Garden in London which is um, the where the Guild of Jewellers is, and we're, uh, is it Guild of Jewellers? Jewellers Guild. Um, and we are actually seeing a master jeweller, and he's going to do my rings for me. He's going to do it for me while we wait, um, or at least while we go and get a cup of coffee. So I'm really excited about that. So as I say, thank you ever so much for everybody who did respond to me. Okay, so that's all the gold. Let me give it a tilt so that you can see the shine on there. Since I've got this really bright light, I don't actually have it right over my head. I hope you can see that. I think you can. Okay, so there's that. What did I do with my... Oh, here it is. Right, now, with the... Um, in fact, because that doesn't dry straight away, I'm going to take a clean piece. Um, so what I've done for the happy 40th anniversary. So on here, I have happy anniversary. And they come from... The well said stamp sets is a two box set, and I have used an happy and anniversary, and I put them on there, and I left enough gap there so that I could put the 40th, and the 40th, well 50th, this one. Let's turn that over, and then turn that one. Um, I did try and get the number and the TH on the same stamp but I couldn't get it quite close enough but they come from this one make a difference which is a fabulous stamp set it's got three alphabets to it it's got the capitals it's got the small lowercase there 
It's also got these small block letters. It's got this set of numbers and this set of numbers and it's got lots of other little bits and pieces with the signs and symbols. Um, they've got the ST, the ND, the RD and the TH for when you're doing um, first, third, etc. Um, so it's an absolutely great stamp set. There's 143 stamps in there all in all. So it's brilliant. If you follow my blog you would have seen the stamp uh, no, a card that I did, it was another anniversary one and I did lots of little arrows um, not arrows, um, like little pennants on a banner and I did one of the little letters in each one for anniversary I was really pleased with how that one came out right, so back onto the gold ink again so I'm just going to stamp the happy anniversary I know that looks crooked on there, but it's my label that's crooked, it's not the uh, actual stamp. Now the 50, I'm going to position that so it's in here, and I know the 5 has got to be below the edge of the H, or slightly in a bit. Now let me see how far down, okay, excuse me if my head's in the camera. As I say I've already done this and it's dried up there um, but I still want to be able to use this on another occasion. So now the TH what I try and do with this one, with the T I try and make sure the upright on the T is straight and then the curvy bit at the bottom of TH I try and get that in line with the bottom of the 5 and the 0 and as close to the 0 as possible without it actually touching. Right, I'm going to concentrate for a minute here. There we go. I think that could have been a little bit higher, the TH, but that's fine by me, I'm happy with that. So there we go, that's that and that. So that's all my stamping done. So I'm going to move these two out of the way. Where can I put them so they're safe? That one and that one. And I'll bring down these two, and you won't know that I've made a switch. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is do some die cutting. So we need the two big hearts, we need two hearts for the inside and die cut this as well. So I'll get my big shot first. As I say, you can dry the ink by using your um, heat tool so the dies that I'm using now from the be mine stitched I'm going to take the fancy heart and I'm going to take that one as well. That's the one that I'm putting on the inside. Now this has a coordinating stamp set called Meant to Be. I brought it over to show you. Okay, that one. It's not available as a bundle now, I don't believe, because it was in the spring catalogue. But it is um, well worth getting both pieces on that. And I'm also going to use from the layering ovals this is number three straight cut and this is number three scalloped right, so first of all I only need to do one um, 
yes one heart because I've already done one of them I was going to tell you that when you're doing something like this and you've got a cutting mat that is really well worn like this to put a piece of paper over your die cut over that before you put this one on so that this doesn't push all the design into your heart but when I tried it earlier it didn't make a mark anyway which really surprised me and I don't know why that happened so if when you're doing it you do find that you have been left with a lot of um, scratches and everything like normally it's all over here as well but there's absolutely nothing but as I say if you do find something um, just put some scrap paper over it before you run it through your machine and I'm just doing this six times to make sure it will come out of the die nice and easily and notice that I change the position and turn it around as well before I do it so there's that one um, I need one of those I need to die cut that as well um, I don't think I bought enough ah I know Maybe I did bring enough gold over with me. Because I need two of these hearts and I need a couple of little ones as well. Come on. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> Dictated to by die. anything there needs to go through twice but that hasn't been scratched or anything right, so there's that one I need another one of these then the two little ones that I'll be putting on here I punch out let's just do one more here I think that's everything done, ready for me to put it all together now. I think with a change of sentiment and using white glimmer um, it would make a fabulous wedding card. One other thing I'd like to say is I know a lot of people when they're doing a project like this and they are die cutting things like this I know they will take theirs out of their layers um, and then once they've cut out the bits and use that as a layer I never ever do that um, I know that it is a possibility um, I have two reasons for not doing it one is um, if I like somebody enough that I'm going to send them a card I'm not going to worry about the little bits um, that I could be saving myself um, but the biggest fear is that when the postman is going to deliver it um, maybe it's raining um, and the envelope gets wet and then the layer above the one that's got the cut out on it comes off so my friend would know what I've done They'd probably take, you know, wouldn't think too much of it, but um, I'd be horrified. Really horrified. There we go. There's just one piece left in there. This is the new um, attachment for our Take Your Pick. Works brilliantly. So I'll sort that out later. I don't want to do that right now. Um, 
I'm just trying to make sure I don't put anything down on my work where I've got the um, paint that's drying, thing that's drying. Right, so first of all I'm going to put this one on because it seems to take a little while to dry. Um, Tombow. I found out that this ink um, doesn't dry immediately. Uh, with the silver card that I did, I smudged the ink on there and I had to redo it. I'd already put it onto my card and I just adhered it over the top. I wonder if you can see. No, I just stuck this one on top of the one underneath there. I don't think you can see that. No, but um, that's my way of finding out that uh, it... Oh, I know what else I've got to do. I forgot to do it on the... Talking too much. On this one, I didn't do it here. I forgot to do the dry embossing. But I did do it on these two. Let me bring it up close so that you can see. See how I've used the subtle embossing folder after I've done the inking, after I've stamped the hearts there. So I'm going to bring my Big Shot back because I want to do it on this one. Now I am going to, because this is a dynamic, or at least mine's a dynamic, you can now get these as our three Ds. Um, and I spray mine to make sure they go through um, nicely. Um, and the embossing is as deep as it can be if it's you've moistened the paper. Um, but obviously I'm only going to spray it on the back this time. So you will hear me spray twice, but obviously I can't do it in front of you, so bear with me. One, two. So that's going to be going in there. Let me just get my big shot back again. So I will use one cutting mat. I'll move those two away. And I'm using a platform, big shot platform, that's all. Now I'm going to make sure that I've got this in straight. And that line helps me beautifully. He thinks maybe not. I'm going to turn it over to make it helpful. Yep, that's good. Okay, so just the platform, the embossing folder with the fold going in first, one cutting mat, and then crank it through. So let's just pop this out of the way again. There we go. That's lovely, I like that. Okay. Doesn't make a huge difference, but it just like finishes it off if you like. So I'm going to start putting my card together. And I am going to be using my tear and tape. Let's take that and we take that as well. If you're um, one of my customers, hopefully you received your um, your copy of the new Christmas catalogue yesterday. I timed it so that you'd get it in time for the weekend, the bank holiday weekend. Which, did you hear, it's going to go up, the temperature's going up to 31 degrees. That's amazing for a bank holiday weekend. We normally get rain. 
Right, let's take the bits off here first. Goodness, that's the wrong size. <gasps> Calamity. Let's just put this back. Funny enough, I found another piece earlier on that I had the wrong size. Just reaching over to get my trimmer. So this piece should be uh, five and three eighths. I wonder if that's going to slice through the uh, tearing tape or not. Only one way to find out really. slightly but okay and then this should be three and three quarters no wonder it wasn't fitting onto that uh, piece of gold so let's try that again this gold come on let go that's it A bit of glue. Right, that's the top. Oops, oops. Sudden panic there, thinking. I was going to be sticking it on upside down. Tape already done on this. and easy.
Right, there we go. I'm going to put these two in first. Tweezers and Tombow. Which way do we do this? Left handed. It's either that or it's cack handed. Which is what my mum always used to say about me. Now when you do this, if you're like me and you use um, tweezers, you have to be very careful because it's so easy to um, get a mark on it. And I've put too much glue on that, so I'm going to wipe some off. Okay, so that's that. Now for the front, I'm, I've got that and I've got that. I'm going to have plan to use that sheet that I've just put all that sticky on. But Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop these two on like this and then my sentiment is going to be coming up here. So what I'm going to do to get the glue on here I know lots of people have got their own ways of doing this, but I like to just tap along with my bottle of Tombow, as long as it's going to play ball with me. And then when I feel that I've got enough in some very strategic places, come on. That's better. Then I just blot it on my scrap paper so that when I put it onto my top layer of my card I don't have glue oozing out all over the place. Okay. There we go. Oops, come back. And then I'm going to put this. I'm leaving about a quarter of an inch in there. And I think that must be coming up about three inches. There we go. And now I'm going to do this one. Making sure I don't put it back in the same spot as the last one. Otherwise I'll finish up with a lot of glue on the front of the heart. get a new one out for the next video and finish this one off when I'm playing. one over and just make sure that I've got about a quarter of an inch that side as well. Now my sentiment here, because I think I can get rid of that one now, I'll rest it there. Um, and this I'm going to pop on with dimensionals. I'll do four, so that's north, south, east and west. Okay. 
I'll just hold it up so I can get this straight. Right, what I do now is I put a little heart there and there. So, right, here we go. My scrap of paper. And I use the dog punch. Can you see that? Yep. Because there's a little heart here. And I have used this for quite a lot of my projects now. That one. And that one. Again. Oh, goodness. Then we've got to try and get Tombow working again. If it doesn't play ball, I... Oops. It is. Too much, so we can share it between both of them. That's it. Okay, so that's that. I also need a bow on here and I'm using uh, gold or gold. <laughs> I don't know if I've opened this one yet. Oh, that's not long enough for what I need. I can't tie a bow like that. Let's put that down. Right. I'd really forgotten that I'd done that. So I want a tiny, tiny bow, but I, it still takes me quite a bit of ribbon to actually be able to tie it. I just keep on pulling it and tightening it and pulling it and tightening it until it's as small as you need it. I think that should be all right. Then decide which side you think looks better. Normally from the point of view of the knot, this is going to be the best side. I can trim this to size later. So what I'm going to do is I am going to put one dimensional on the back, uh, not dimensional, glue dot even. And then I'm going to put some glue Yep, that's good. I hope there's nothing else that I've got to use Tombow for now. So I'm going to pop that there. And then while I'm sorting out the uh, rhinestones for those two gold hearts up at the top there, I am going to put that on there. Right, I think, oh, I've got some gold pearls, haven't I? I wonder if they're okay for size. Um, yep, that's 
that's going to work nicely. I should have used the silver ones on the other card. Just didn't think about it. There we go, that's lovely. So there we go, I'm not going to move that too much but I will probably trim it. But you'll see that on my uh, blog on Sunday if I do trim it down. Oh, what's that? There's another one. There we go, so another gold pearl. Don't know where that one came from. Anyway, there we go. That's today's project. I really hope you like it and you give it a try. Um, obviously you need to get the uh, gold ink first but there's no reason why you can't do a straightforward anniversary one in the blue uh, that was Knight of Navy and the silver you need to wait for I'm afraid unless you want to sign up as a demonstrator before 31st of August and then you can choose that as part of your kit just like you can choose anything that's in the new Christmas catalogue as part of your starter kit if you'd like to know more about that, please contact me at jambi at jambicards.com. I'm more than happy to answer all your questions for you and any questions that you haven't even thought of yet. So many thanks for joining me today. As I say, I really hope you give this one a try. If you have any comments to make or any questions, please leave them in the box below the video. You can access the box um, if you're watching the video on YouTube underneath the writing you'll see the words show more if you click on that it will open the box up um, and in there you will find um, all the measurements of everything the products that I've used the product codes a link to my shop and also all my contact details as well um, equally if you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one um, please click on the subscribe button which is down there in the bottom right hand corner and then click on the bell to which says you, that you would like to get the notifications when I upload another video. So there we go, many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting, cheerio.